I do appreciate it. Personally. My name is, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brian. Um, the first time I saw Isaac, he was wearing an NSYNC shirt and was talking about Justin Timberlake. Um, suffice it to say, we, we got on very well. Uh, skipping ahead somewhat in the time we um, After a time, we got to know each other better. Um, he and I started going down to this um, gender discussion group in Chicago, uh, aptly named Gender Queer Chicago, and we this became a regular ongoing occurrence. I mean, we're talking weekly or you know bi-weekly on a regular basis, and we spent hours and hours uh, in the car talking to one another and uh, drinking Monster Energy drinks. Those of you who got to see a caffeinated Isaac <laughs> uh, will appreciate um, how much of a delight that was. But we got we got we got to know we got to know each other very very well. I feel like I got a uh, a unique insight into him owing to just hours of I mean you drive you know you, you want to talk but it's just awkward and unpleasant. So I found we came to find that we had a lot in common. Um, we we both share. Um, uh, being transgender, uh, and hence the gender discussion group. We both went, we both felt strongly affiliated with uh, grandparently roles, as uh, I am known to so many of you, as uh, those of you who know me, I guess, as Grandma Brad, and he was Grandpa Isaac. Um, this is because of the thing I'm about to mention also that we shared, which was a love of awful, terrible, just shameful puns and bad, bad jokes. And he told them like the most seasoned of familial patriarchs. And and I it, it worked well, especially if again for those long, long car rides. Uh, something something else that we had in common though was uh, struggles with you know mental illness with head stuff. And I think that a large part of what made him uh, made him the strong person that he was was that 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 struggle sometimes that that difficulty and you know that sadness and depression and anxiety and I think that not only he, he fought against that so strongly he was just determined to live the life that he wanted the life that he chose he didn't want those things to hold him back or hold him down and he he chose to feel that, and to be a positive person, to be a forward-thinking and forward-looking person. And I think that that people's, a lot of people's main memory of him as being cheery and funny is something that would be so gratifying to him to know, because that is the, the person that he chose to be and the way he chose to act. And it's not to say that that wasn't who he was, it absolutely was, but it was a conscious choice. And I, I wouldn't want to do him a, a disservice by not acknowledging that that was, that was effort. It's not that that wasn't part of it, but that was something he tried very, very hard to do. He was an unbelievably strong and determined man. Like, I have not known very many people who, had, who were not only strong enough to deal with that and come across the way they wanted to, but to do it and make it look effortless. And he was not only strong for, for himself, he wanted to be strong for other people. That strength, that he, the, the way that he chose to feel is the way he wanted to help other people to feel. And he put other people, he would put other people before him constantly. He would be there if he needed to, if I needed to call him at three in the morning, he would be there and he would not make me feel bad about it. He would be concerned with how I was feeling. And I think that this, this determination, this, this struggle, helped him stay strong and resolute with so many aspects of his life, with, with, uh, with, with transitioning, um, with his determination to be with Melody, which, you know, again, in those car rides, I heard an awful lot about Melody. <laughs> and, you know, the vast majority of it was very, very flattering. <laughs> and the remainder of it was absolutely adorable. <laughs> so, and, you know, I, I think in, inherent in really addressing and becoming functional, thriving in the face of, of mental illness and, and struggles in life is, is acceptance. 
Um, acceptance that sometimes things are harder for no good reason. And acceptance that sometimes there are things in life that hurt and are completely unfair. And I mean, the fact that we're all gathered here today is one of those things. And I think that the acknowledgement of goodness and badness and giving your life often in spite of both is what made him very fond of the song that I'm about to read. Uh, because in addition to the constant speaking and imbibing of highly caffeinated sugar-free drinks, uh, we also listened to music. And music that we both came to enjoy a lot was Streetlight Manifesto. And this particular song, I'm only reading a portion of it, and I had to tweak it a little bit to make it something that would you know, work with me standing up here saying it instead of like with a full ska band behind me. So forgive me for the lack of suits and trumpets. Okay. So again, this is a selection from Somewhere in the Between by uh, Streetlight Manifesto. Um, you had a love, and that love had you, and nothing mattered, you were fine. And some will complain, they're just bitter, what a shame. They know that loving and losing is better than nothing at all. Maybe the times we had, they weren't that bad, and everything else was part of our path, and we sang, I don't know where we'll go from the anthem, the slogan, the summary of events, and we all just idealize the past. And so you were born, and that was a good day. And someday you will die, and that is a shame. But somewhere in the between, you lived a life of which we all dream and nothing and no one will ever take that away. Maybe the times we had, they were not that bad, and everything else was part of our path, and we sang, I don't know where we'll go, from the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, and we all just idealize the past. And so you were born, and that was a good day, and someday you will die, and that is a shame. But somewhere in the between, you lived the life of which we all dream, and nothing and no one will ever take that away. And someday soon, my friends, this ride will come to an end, but we can't just get in line again. And uh, now, uh, I would now please welcome uh, Isaac's guitar instructor here at Alverno, Peter Rock. Yes, I do teach in the music department here, and Isaac, as I think most people know, is deeply into music. And, uh, a sign of Isaac's uh, single-minded determination in whatever he wanted to do was that uh, came into Alberto doing more like formal school music where you read notes, play in an ensemble, and immediately learned how to do folk finger picking with me. Um, and uh, after one beginner guitar piece in guitar tablature, which is totally foreign to school music learning, um, Isaac was ready to do a Leo Kotke piece, which I'm going to play for you today. <laughs> 